Thomas Oslender joined us uh, today. He's head of department information management and production control at Fraunhofer IOSB here in uh, Karlsruhe, Germany. So uh, it uh, wasn't a long journey today. Good morning and hi. Good morning. Yeah. Good to have you here, Dr. Uslender. Um, uh, we'll talk about uh, smart cities in uh, the next minutes and uh, let's start uh, in very gently. What do you understand by a smart city? Yeah, a smart city uh, should be understood from various perspectives, of course. Uh, maybe the most important perspective is the, those of the citizens. Uh, they, they think uh, a city should be smart in the sense that uh, the city should offer some services that supports the citizen in, his, uh, in her daily life. Uh, when going to uh, some authority, when having to uh, to perform some activity with some civil authorities or getting higher security level in the cities or knowing about what is going on in the city in the terms of uh, traffic uh, but also in terms of events. Uh, okay, where can I buy things? All these uh, things can be supported by a smart city, but I think uh, from a more IT perspective or technolog technological perspective, uh, this term smart city should be much more broader mm. and even should be broader when taking into account not only the perspective of citizens, but also the perspective of uh, other stakeholders, such, such as uh, the government uh, authorities, agencies, but also industrial players. And so uh, what is the task of a city um, that wants to be become smart, to become a smart city? Yeah, that's a really good question. What is really uh, the job of a city if uh, the city wants to become a smart city? Uh, and I think um, the most important job, the most important activity is to think about a uh, very good smart city infrastructure, uh, like a city uh, has a good uh, road infrastructure or other kind of infrastructures, they need an IT infrastructure for getting a smart city, uh, such that uh, a kind of ecosystem uh, may emerge that consists of players coming from uh, uh, the citizens, but also from, uh, from the uh, commercial uh, stakeholders such as start-up companies, uh, students, uh, industrial players that want to get involved uh, in uh, joint activities uh, with the city or with other stakeholders uh, that are also located in the city. Mm. You're not only working on the topic of uh, smart city but uh, you also have the smart regions in your portfolio. The countryside is uh, probably uh, lagging far behind in, in digitalization worldwide. Um, does that have to change and uh, if so, um, why? Uh, okay, I, I'm, I'm not so sure if really the countryside is uh, lagging behind yeah. but I think it sh they should be integrated. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you cannot only think in terms of boundaries of a city. And you should not only think in terms of big cities, mm. uh, also cities, mid-sized uh, cities like Karlsruhe, Heidelberg, others, but also smaller cities here in the technology region of Karlsruhe like Ettlingen, Rastatt, Bruchsal and so on. They all need to get smart and they need to get smart in the sense that uh, all these uh, cities need interconnection, they need interoperation. People are living maybe in the region and are working in the city or vice versa. Uh, so uh, if you need some mobility support, uh, mm. you do not want to change your app or you want do not want to use a, a different service if you transfer a boundary uh, from a small city over the region up to a bigger city. So even you don't know when you enter another boundary, another region. Mm. Uh, so you have to think about interoperable solutions and interoperable services that is see that are seamlessly offered for all the stakeholders. Mm. After all you are essentially concerned with uh, standards for smart cities. Uh, why exactly are you researching at the Fraunhofer IOSB? We are thinking about the whole uh, decision-making chain from the sensor from the physical sensor where you get information about uh, what is going on in the roads, uh, on a public place, uh, in the environment, over the question how to transmit uh, this kind of data, kind of raw data, 
some, to some central place in order to make information out of this. Uh, you have to dis defer between, distinguish between data and information. So you have to add context information. You have to add meaning mm -hmm. to that data in order then to offer services to higher level application. And this whole uh, decision taking chain, information chain, uh, is part of our research. How to do this is an, in an open way, how to really attach uh, semantics and meaning to the data uh, such that you can build higher level services. Mm. Uh, this is still uh, a research topic. It's not solved. It's basically, yes, it's solved, but it's not solved for all these domains of the Internet of Things. It's not only specific to smart cities, also in other domains like in the energy domain, in the industrial domain, when you think of Industry 4.0, uh, it's the same issue. Hmm? To give meaning to the data in order to produce and generate services. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about uh, sensors and applications. Um, um, what are they for? Um, from the user perspective, you just have maybe an app, you have a user interface, you see maps, you see diagrams, yeah. uh, but all this information must have some uh, data foundation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is the question, how to make uh, this information, uh, how to offer this information in a way that the user intuitively can use it uh, but having a really good uh, quality chain down to the physical sensor. Mm. Um, keywords environment and uh, sustainability. To what extent do cities need to be digitized to become more sustainable and environmentally friendly? Uh, I think in order, uh, for example, to improve uh, the quality of the air in the city, mm. you need to know, okay, what is the temperature, uh, what is the quality of the air currently, how was it uh, last week, how was it uh, last month. Maybe you uh, have to uh, learn patterns, how the situation changes and moves depending on weather conditions. Mm. If you can learn this, uh, maybe today based upon uh, machine learning methods, you can forecast uh, the situation of, uh, of the current situation. Mm. Uh, so these are very important uh, uh, research topics. If you combine environmental issues, environmental sensors with uh, artificial intelligence means such as machine learning. The whole thing costs a lot of money uh, to begin with a smart city. Can digitization also help uh, make a city more attractive? Um, uh, yes, I think so. Uh, yesterday we had a presentation or uh, even two about uh, installing some information panels mm -hmm. in cities. Uh, you can get this, this information also from your uh, smartphones, but uh, maybe people want to have that uh, in physical information panels, uh, but with a dynamic information. Uh, of course, you can then uh, finance and sponsor such uh, placements uh, by advertisement. Mm. You can even earn money out of this information. Mm. But I think the most important aspect is that uh, you create an ecosystem uh, such that uh, the city becomes attractive for startups because they have uh, uh, high level services they can use. Um, and also the industry uh, needs uh, such high level services. So uh, a smart city infrastructure, a very efficient and uh, high quality smart city infrastructure may become a location factor uh, for industry. If they think about should I go here or there, um, then in the future I think uh, the infrastructure services will also be uh, a factor for their decisions. As you said, it was all about smart cities. Yesterday with you at uh, one of our stages, did you learn something, uh, something new? Um, yes, I learned that, okay, there are a lot of companies, also small companies, that really want to take benefit of this movement towards smart cities. Uh, cities. They would like to create uh, also a kind of app stores for, for example, for video analytics. 
Uh, however, the big problem is always interoperability. Uh, if you just look at vertical solutions and uh, silo uh, solutions, then uh, you will not uh, get into the situation of a really integrated smart city. Um, and I think here there's still a lot of uh, um, conceptual gap to be to overcome uh, to define um, a smart city framework that may be used for every city in Germany, but also in Europe, um, in order to produce uh, this information and this kind of services that the stakeholders need. Thomas Oslender, thank you for joining us today. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much.